video is brought to you by The Winner's Crime by Marie Rutkotsky, coming March 3rd from FSG. The Winner's Crime is a sequel to The Winner's Curse. This is a YA series that has romance, action, adventure, war, politics, intrigue. There's something here for everybody. Of course it will appeal to teens, but it's also a great pick for adult readers who are fans of CW show Rain, or if you enjoyed Lainey Taylor's Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. It's also a fantastic selection for book clubs with members of any age who are looking to get into the world of YA. So that's The Winner's Crime by Marie Rutkowski, coming out March 3rd from FSG, available wherever books are sold. Hey, I'm Rebecca Shinsky. I'm the director of content for Book Riot, and it's been a few weeks since we did a peek inside the mailbag, so I have five really great books to share with you this week. And as a perk, some of them are out already, and you can snag them immediately if they sound like they're up your alley. Let's get started. First up is H is for Hawk by Helen McDonald. This one came out this week on March 3rd, so it's available right now. This sounds fascinating, and it's kind of snuck up on me, but it seems like buzz about this book is just about to explode. McDonald uh, was a falconer, and I keep thinking about that SNL skit about the falconer, but I'm pretty sure this is more serious than that. After her father died, she decided to adopt and train a hawk. She knew that hawks were notoriously difficult to train. They're known as being fierce, having you know very strong temperaments, and she felt some resonance between that and the feelings that she was coping with in the wake of her father's death. So she adopts a hawk and sets out to train it using primarily a book written by T.H. White, who, yes, that's the guy who wrote The Once and Future King, and this is the memoir of that experience. This sounds so intriguing, and the writing is supposed to be very beautiful. I mean, as I said, it's just sort of burst onto my radar all of a sudden, and now that I know about it, I can't wait to give it a shot. Next up is Crow Fair. It's a new collection of short stories by Thomas McGuane. He's known for writing stories set in big sky country, you know, out in Montana, and these stories are no exception. They deal with familial ties, with complications in our intimate and personal relationships, and he's also been called a comic genius compared to both Gogol and Mark Twain, which sometimes book blurbs lie, but I am very intrigued to even read someone who's been compared to Mark Twain. Those are really big shoes to fill, and even just watching the attempt is bound to be interesting. So I'm gonna give this one a shot as well. Okay, this next one is from the Department of Cheeky Book Covers. This is Come As You Are, which bonus points for the Nirvana lyrics and the orgasm pun. I appreciate that. Uh, Emily Nagoski is a PhD in human sexuality and women's health, and this book looks at the research that was attempting to find a women's version of Viagra. The joke goes that it would be a little pink pill, but apparently the research has led many people to the conclusion that there won't be a women's version of Viagra, that women's sexuality functions differently and needs to be understood in the context of our brains and also a different kind of context of desire and arousal. So the book promises life-changing new understandings about sexuality. If you're interested, maybe you'll learn something. Who knows? Life-changing is a big claim to make, but it does have a pretty great cover, and this one is out now as well. Okay, next up, a few forthcoming releases. This is The Walls Around Us by Nova Rensuma. It comes out March 24th from Algonquin. This is a book about three girls, one of whom is a dancer out in the normal civilian world that we're sitting in right now. Another one is in a juvenile detention center. And the third is the girl who ties the first two together. Some of the other contributors at Book Riot have been buzzing about this book, and I saw one of them say that she had a weakness for books about ballet and prison stories, and I thought she had to be talking about two different things, but she was talking about both of those things in one book, and it's this book. Uh, lots of rave reviews so far. I'm trying to read more YA this year. I'm trying to read more diverse authors. I've definitely never read a YA book about ballet or about a prison experience, and this will hit both of those at one time. It's supposed to be fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to it. And last but not least is Invasion of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. This comes out on June 9th, so you have a little ways to wait, but you probably recognize this because the first book, Queen of the Tearling, came out last year and was huge, feministy, informed, 
genre fiction, strong female heroine in a dystopian setting. So, so many people loved this one. And in this book, the story continues with the evil group invading the Tierling, of which the young woman is the queen. So if you missed Queen of the Tierling last year, you've got a couple months to read it and get caught up. If you were in the huge group of people that loved the book last year, maybe give it a reread, or if nothing else, you can circle June 9th on your calendar, pre-order this one from your bookstore or your library, and get ready for the story to continue. That wraps it up for me this week. I have lots of reading to do to get caught up on this season. If you've read any of these that are brand new or you've got your eye on any of the ones that aren't out yet, please let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments down below. And don't forget to click on subscribe to stay up to date with all of Book Riot's bookish goodness. I'll see you next time.